This is a follow-up video on the Helicrafters S40B that I recently featured for recapping. I've repaired the tuning dials and cleaned the unit up and she really looks nice but it has a new problem that I was not aware of. So after recapping I powered and hooked the receiver up to an antenna hoping to have great performance what I ended up with was distorted audio and low receive. I thought, man, what can that be? Well, taking a closer look, I found the problem, and it's not a good one. So I'm sure you have all heard of these mica caps that are inside of these IF cans. So this is T1, T2, and T3. I had the receiver on, and it was sitting on its side just like this. And as I look closer at T3, I could see arcing inside of the little case. And there was flashing coming out around the leads. So I shut the receiver down immediately. So I did a little research and I found out the mica caps are in the base of this IF can. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this, pull out the can. We're going to open up and inspect it and hopefully repair it. Alright, I took pictures to document how this IF transformer was hooked up. I've carefully removed the leads and now I'm going to pull the IF can out and get her open. You may be asking yourself, why go through all the hassle for a receiver that might be worth a hundred bucks? Well, I'm pretty far into it. I'd like to see it completed. Plus, this is a great challenge. So the IF can is just held in by this spring clip which engages on the side. So we got her out and I'll see if I can slide the insides out and inspect it. So there's two little aluminum tabs that were folded over. I understand that these things can be extremely brittle since it was made in the 40s. So there it is. Pretty cool little device. I understand the mica caps are here in the base. And there's a little retainer. I'm going to either have to uh, drill it out or possibly use my Dremel tool and cut it and remove those mica caps. So you look through the magnifying glass you can see the little mica elements. There's a plastic insulator on top and a brass plate that's pop riveted on and you got those little itty bitty wires so it'd be real easy to mangle this thing. Okay I've decided I'm gonna try to use a Dremel tool with a little milling bit. Put that guy in there and I'm going to cut the outside edge of the little brass pop rivet. And maybe after doing that I can knock that off and then push the plastic up from the front. Wish me luck. Alright, victory. I was able to cut the head off of that little pop rivet and the cap assembly kind of slid back so I think it's going to come right out. I was able to take an X-Acto knife, pop the head up off that little pop rivet there. It's ready to come out. It is out. Excellent. Now we can get those little mica plates out of there and get this thing repaired. I'm sliding out the bottom side of the little mica insulator here. You can see all the black arcing. There's actually an area where it went right through the plate. I'm going to get it out and see if we can all take a look. There's the damaged area. And that's why she was arcing from one plate to the other. So now I need to remove these little plates here that are now touching each other. So we don't short out the coils. And I'm going to put this thing back together. So I'm going to double check the coils. They appear to be around 16 ohms a piece. Now I need to put some adhesive on these terminals because we've lost the restraint of that little pop rivet assembly. And I'm going to put this thing back together and the new caps are going to mount on the leads underneath of the IF can. Alright, I used some E6000 and I glued those leads back to the housing. So I'm going to let this set up for a while and then I'll remount the can add some caps and see if we can determine which ones are required for proper alignment of the 455. Well there's T3 mounted back 
in the S40B receiver with external mica capacitors. To determine the value, I took the old mica pad that was in the IF can and I was able to measure the capacitance on each side which was approximately 100 picofarad. So I ended up installing 120 puff across terminals 3 and 4 and 100 puff on terminals 1 and 2 which is across the coils in the IF can. I found that those values allowed a good peaking of the internal slugs when I adjusted it to the IF frequency. So one thing to note, I initially installed these caps and tried to just bench test the IF can injecting a 455. After installing the IF can into the radio, everything shifted due to the capacitance of the other components in the circuit. To adjust T3 after modification, I'm monitoring on the phone's output with my scope and I'm using a WaveTech 3006 for the input. And then I simply peaked the coils on T3. So I'm not going to show the complete IF alignment in this video. The intentions were to show you how to repair IF CAN T3 in the S40B. There are also two other IF CANs that could have the same issue in your receivers and that's T1 and T2 they are a different part number from T3 so IF you decide to do this now you have some good information to go by hope you enjoyed the video